Look at these little Shasta blue butterflies hanging out in this coyote mint. Monardella, possibly Odorithisma, possibly one of the other species. These could be kind of hard to key out to figure out what the hell species you're looking at, but, uh, you know, I just just narrow it down to Monardella. It's in the uh, Lamiaceae, the salvia family, and it smells pretty nice, you know? So when they finally set up uh, one of those uh, flush toilets up here, you know, one of the bathrooms, the guy, they could do a real nice bathroom setup over there, you know, with a little visitor center and shit, and a little, you know, a little uh, uh, kiosk and a rotunda with an informational sign. I'm just kidding. I don't really think that. God damn, I love, uh, I love coyote mint, though. Nice sulfur buckwheats. Got that circle carpus letifolius, the mountain mahogany going strong. And then you got a roughly uh, a 500,000 year old basaltic lava flow, which came out of this crater, which if you look at it on a satellite map or a terrain map, looks like a little, uh, a little pimple, you know? And this was, uh, I guess it was actually radiometrically dated. So they date the, you know, the rate of decay, the half-life of, because uh, everything's technically emitting radiation. Not necessarily radiation that'll kill you, but uh, everything's technically emitting radiation. But regardless, the uh, the elements that are formed in these rocks, when they're emitted, uh, when, when the rock crystals, crystallizes, they slowly start to break down. And every element, of course, has a half-life. And so uh, in that way, geologists are able to radiometrically date rocks and uh, uh, see how old they are. A, a similar a similar thing that's going on with carbon-14 dating, which, of course, you, only goes back about 50, 60,000 years, and which you can only do with things uh, that have carbon in them, you know, things that were once alive. Carbon-14, rather, that, that carbon isotope. Anyway, what the fuck am I talking about? Oh, there you got a nice uh, connectoid, a rare connectoid, dimeresia, and uh, boy, do I love my connectoid. So we're going to go up there, we're going we're gonna to check it out. Nice little uphill hike. Not bad for an uphill hike, you know? Pure pumice rock. It's better than sand. Got some circle car circle carpus, some persia, some bunch grasses, possibly for the festuca or a mullenbergia. I don't know, because I haven't started to give a shit about grasses yet. Nice areaganum. Got a linanthus, polymoniaceae. Great basin sagebrush. Always a banger. And we're on the shady side, too, so we're not getting cooked. It's more that choke cherry, that Prunus uh, virginiana. Oh, God. Only 300 more meters to go. Oh, look, it's a Stephanomeria chicory tribe, Asteraceae. Goddamn love these. I love all the chicory tribes. All the chicory members. Look at it, only five flowers. Nice thing about the chicory is, see, they just got those, those five-toothed ligules, those ray flowers. And they're, uh, you know, the only... I think the only tribe that's got that is a synapomorphy. The ligules got five teeth. Most aster rays have three teeth. But the chicory sicaroidea only has five, or it's got five. Then you see there, you could see the anther columns perfectly. Look at it. Because they got the, there's no corolla around it. The anthers are so prominent. Stefano Marriott. I think they call it skeleton weed or some shit. Anyway, there you go. There's the uh, volcanic legacy. More that volcanic legacy. 500,000 year old basalt flows, you know, and I heard they got a real nice vaulted uh, vault toilet, a vaulted vault toilet up at the top, you know, and a little visitor center and shit. They sell some informational pamphlets in there. Uh, oh, look, it's a clerkia. Where'd it go? That's a nice. Remember, Ona Gracie, four petals, four petals on the Ona grades, the evening primrose family. Then you got an inferior ovary too, which just means that the fruit is beneath uh, the fusion of the perianth parts, you know, right there. You got inferior and superior ovaries. Some nice shit to pay attention to when you're uh, trying to diagnose what the hell plant you're looking at. Still don't know what this grass is. Probably Festuca. I don't know. Fuck. Who, who knows? Who are you guys hot? You're fine. I got to check your fatigues later. This is thick country. Hey, look, it's a Calicordus macrocarpus still going off. At about 4,800 feet elevation. Ooh. Look at the sepals. If you don't give a shit about Calicordus, you're an asshole. Really look into this genus. It's all Western North American and Mexican. I seen some in a Highland Oaxaca two years ago. I believe that was Barbados. Wonderful goddamn genus in the lily family. And the sepals on Macrocarpus are sort of the best. It's probably one of my favorites. Oh, what's this? 
Another Asteraceae, possibly in a Rigoran. With the purple ray flowers. Looks like it's already done though. Maybe I can find one that's still going off. God, I'm so excited to get up there and check out the vault toilet. They got a real nice vault toilet up there. They got a little guy in there, I heard. That uh, douses you with a little spritz of perfume and slaps you around with a towel on your way out. It's really nice. Oh, I'm kind of sweating like a uh, whore in church. It's been a steep uphill climb. No offense to whores. Anyway, here's a Antonaria rosea. Look at that. You wouldn't even notice. It just looks like, a, you know, some bullshit herbage on the ground, you know? Get your David Axelrod on. It's just the ground trash. I think that's what he called it. The famous paleobotanist. But look at it up close. You can see those, those prominent styles poking out of those discoid flowers. Beautiful goddamn color on those, uh, what the hell are those? Are those rays or just phyleries that are morphed into rays? I don't know. I haven't studied the goddamn, uh, I haven't studied this genus or this tribe that much. Still out. Pretty nice to see. Almost at the top, too. Here we go. This bastard's always a pleasure to see, and he comes in so many different uh, variations and colors. Here's the Athelon fasciculatum, the parasite, and the Orobanchaceae, artist formerly known as the Orobanchi. Very weird flower structure on these guys, too. Get up in there. He's probably parasitized in his Persia or uh, this Artemisia. They, I think most of them, I think most of the species are pretty host specific, you know? They're pretty specific about what host, what host plant they're gonna rob. They're gonna rob, steal everything that ain't nailed down. Anyway, I just uh, I just ripped one of these juicy bastards up, which I don't recommend you doing. But this is a common species, and there's a lot here, so it's fine. I was gonna take a herbarium voucher for it. I also I wanted to show you what's going on with the plant here. Now my hands are trembling because I've had far too much caffeine and not enough water because I'm a jackass. But you can really get up in there and see what's going on. Basically, the stigmatic, uh, the little stigmatic disc is what's poking out. It's that hooked thing at the top. And then in there, yeah, just, you know, further deep in the corolla there, you got the stamens. Okay, and then you come down here, look at that. It's what's going on right there. So you got that open stigma. Remember, that's like the plant cervix ready to receive pollen. And then uh, to get the pollen, the pollinators actually got to go down in there in those flowers, probably lured by the rich sugary nectary bullshit down in down inside there and then that's when they brush up against the stamens and there are multiple stamens in there and they uh they get all that pollen they got a nice little nectar guide too see that bright yellow it's like they're rolling out the red carpet for those bastards get them in there real quick and, and again no chlorophyll because it's parasitizing uh another plant and uh, like i said uh, the host in uh the host in this genus uh is important in terms of identifying see and so it's uh, got a hostoria down there, parasitic uh, root, and it, it just taps into the root of that aster, which is was probably just right beneath this. Or not aster, sorry, that's that's an aster, that's the artemisia. This is Persia trident tied in a rose family. Could be doing that the uh, circle carpus too, another rose family member. Anyway, that's Aphelon. Orobanchaceae. Great goddamn genus. So beautiful. Ooh. Uh, so anyways, I, I'm actually inside the crater now. Hiking down into it, you could see I'm walled in on all sides. Just came over the rim. So, you know, 500,000 years ago, this was uh, this was spewing a bunch of frothy 2,000 uh, degrees Fahrenheit bullshit out of it. And uh, probably looked pretty nice. Probably dangerous and terrifying, too. And, of course, there were, uh, you know, saber-toothed cats and uh, uh, woolly mammoths and probably some giant ground sloths, uh, you know, strolling about and what the shit, too. Anyway, this dimeresia is supposedly, presumably, down inside that crater. So we're going to go check it out nice. So, uh, here I am in the center of the crater. This is actually the, the epicenter of this little volcanic crater. And I knew that this goddamn uh, plant was small, but I didn't know that it was this small. I mean, this is kind of ridiculous. But uh, I'll tell you why this plant's interesting and shit, so you can uh, get some context to why a grown man is sitting here staring at the ground. This is a Dimeresia howellii, and it, I first read about it in Vicky Funk's book on Asteraceae, and it was a uh, somebody mentioned how it's the closest living relative uh, when they, you know, and they found this out when they did the uh, molecular phylogenetics, the DNA analysis uh, on how closely related everything in the connactoid clad was. This is the closest living relative to Canactus, which is one of my favorite aster genera. 
It's a discoid genus of asters with no ray flowers, real, real pretty corollas. God damn, look at how tiny that fucking pappus is. Look at it. So right there, that thing sticking out, that cream colored thing, that's the corolla. That's a, an older version of one of those white guys. Those white five lobed corollas. And then, uh, and then down there, you got the pappus scales, which look like the little dandelion hairs sticking out. And then the seed, of course, is below that, the akeen. This is really a fucking tiny plant. You know, I mean, look, it's smaller than a dime. And it's just growing here. And that's another thing you, you want to wonder about, is why is it growing here in this, in, you know, this is the only spot we've seen it growing. Now, to be fair, it is small as hell. As, as hell. Maybe we could have overlooked it. But the only spot we've seen it growing was inside this volcanic crater. Not up there, nowhere else, just here. So it's easy to miss, but, uh, you know, it's also got a very weird ecological niche. You know, and it's, I guess it's relatively common in these volcanic highlands, but again, only growing on pure pumice soil. Or at least it's a, what I've read. Maybe a great, bet you could get it to grow some other places, but the only places I've read about it growing are on this pumice nice. Oh, Jesus, that feeling of being so dehydrated that your muscles start cramping. Fucking Asteraceae, though, man. You got plants that are smaller than a diamond, and you got things that are tree size everywhere but the Arctic. What a wonderful family of plants, the sunflower family. Anyway, another common name for this is doublet, and that's because uh, you got two florets per capitula, as you can see there. And this, again, this fucking thing is ridiculously tiny. It's amazing how... But you got your typical canactoid corollas right there. Canactoid uh, lobes on those corollas. And again, that pappus. Look at that tiny pappus. It's a tiny pappus! It's so tiny. Oh, shit. What's this Diplacus over here? Where's this guy at? You can see him. There he is. Little monkey flower. It's another cool genus. All right, that's all I got. Go fuck yourself. Bye. Who is your host plant? Tell me who your host plant is. I need to know. Yes, I'm talking to you. Goddamn weird day math. The moth that's out in the daytime. That's all you are. Who is your host plant? Okay, so again, why is this tiny little bastard that you can barely see, that you can walk right over without even noticing, why is it uh, remarkable? Well, one, it's a monotypic genus, meaning it's the only species in the genus, which means it's just a lineage that, uh, I guess, makes it rare for that point. It hasn't diversified. It's just kind of been doing its thing. It, it branched off from the uh, canactoid uh tribe and then just kind of has been doing its thing you know in uh in southwestern idaho northwestern nevada northeast california in uh, southern oregon southeastern oregon for uh however many you know hundreds of thousands of years and uh you know also it's got very specific ecological and habitat requirements namely uh this uh, this palace this volcanic palace this pumice bullshit you know, and it's got to be just the right size that it can get established. If it's too big, it's not going to, you know, the plant is too small uh, to get established too easy. So it's got to be the right grain size of pumice, and it's got to be volcanic rock. It's got to be that high silica volcanic rock. So uh, it's, you know, it's a pretty goddamn remarkable plant, especially if uh, you're into the connect this group like I am. All right, go fuck yourself.